Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To begin this devotion, let us sing together the hymn, Come Holy Ghost, Our Souls Inspire. As many of us are going through difficult times, pain and suffering, for today's devotion, I would like to share a short message on remembering and living the Gethsemane prayer. Our mind is the greatest gift given by God. As a believer in Christ, we need to learn how to use, shape our mind and think effectively as per the gospel and teachings of Jesus Christ and be an example in our daily lives. In John chapter 14, verse 31, Jesus says that he loves his father, and so he did exactly what his father commanded him to do. He sets an example of what it means to love his father in exact, precise obedience. Obedience is the evidence of love, not only during fun, pleasurable moments, but during painful times as well. How about us today as we confess that we love God and to what extent we obey his commandments? If pain, hurt, suffering is part of God's plan, are we ready to endure it and go through it as well in obedience and faith in Him? Jesus obeyed exactly and He wasn't either spared from the pain in spite of His prayers in Gethsemane as it was part of God's plan for the better. We can understand the mind of Christ from this happening and adopt such mindset to be an obedient and faithful child of God obeying and doing even when it is painful. Jesus knew the hardships and the pain, emotionally, physically, and also spiritually, that is ahead of him. He prayed at Gethsemane if he could be spared from his suffering, yet at the same time, he surrenders to God's will to be done and not his will. Let's look into this Gethsemane prayer. 
In Mark chapter 14, verse 36, we find the Gethsemane prayer incident. So Jesus was praying and he was crying out in agony. Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me, yet let your will be done, not mine. We all have our Gethsemane situation in our lives. So much of hardships, difficulties, and suffering we've been through and we face. Each of us with our own story and experiences in life. Sometimes we go through the pain for the good and the benefit of others, which we know as the redemptive suffering, just like how Jesus redeemed us from our sins on the cross. Let's break it down, this prayer, into three parts. The first one, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. So if you look into this meaning of Abba, it has a very intimate relationship with one's father. So it means Daddy, Papa. So the first uh, point in this uh, first part of the prayer is calling out to the Father in faith, unwavering faith. Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Second part is asking. So asking for help, asking for deliverance, asking for relief and also miracle. Take away this cup of suffering from me. The third part, surrender. So even though asking to take away the suffering, Jesus surrendered himself to the God's will. And this is the mind of Christ that we can adopt as well today. Are we willing to do this? In Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, we find the results and outcome of having this kind of mindset, the mind of Christ. Because Jesus humbled himself fully obedient, even that on the cross, God exalted him and raised him to the highest place, name above all names. Similarly, God will lift us up if we obey and humble ourselves before God in due time. And we find many promises on that in the Bible as well. The ability to see a purpose in the pain and see the reward past the pain is important, which we can refer to as the eternal perspective. Or else discouragement, frustration, and depression would make us give up in course of time. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, we find that Jesus was willing to die a shameful death on the cross and he was able to do it. He was able to endure it because he knew about the joy that would be his afterwards. It's time we rethink and put on the mind of Christ for positive change today in our lives. Let us begin by trying these two steps in relation to this. First, we have to study his life and the words in the Bible. As we know, the truth will set us free. Hebrews 12, 2 reminds us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because he is the one who has begun the race and he has finished it. And by learning about his life and his words, we can know how Jesus did it. Second step, asking God to show us the meaning of the text as we read and how it applies to our lives today. If you look at Psalm number 119, verse 18, it says, Open my eyes that I may see, that I may see wonderful things in your word. And again in John 16, verse 15, it says, The Holy Spirit will enable us, will reveal to us the meaning of the words that Jesus wants to, us to know. I believe through these steps, we would be able to see revival in our lives today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the MCC fraternity and this blessed time of devotion. Help us to rethink our lives and put on the mind of Christ and be your instruments of change. As we go through this uncertainty in our society today, with lots of pain and suffering, change us and transform our minds and help us to obey in humility, have courageous faith to bring forth godly leaders and make a difference for your glory. As we remember the prayer of Gethsemane, help us to live the prayer, focusing on the things that would last forever. Knowing you more and living a meaningful life, we commit the day's activities and our lives into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.